да. Well, it's starting to look, uh, look like it's supposed to look. And of course, we've had a bit of a clean up as well today, which uh, is always a bonus. All lovely and clean. That's uh, that's been a. A challenge, I've got to admit. And then the next challenge is that bit, which isn't as bad. There is a chimney up there, um, which is a modern chimney. Now that's been done in a, a concrete common brick. So of course it'll be white. And we don't want it white, we want it brick coloured, we want it orangey ready mixture of bricks etc you can see it up there so what i propose to do with that is i'm going to strip the paint as normal cut out all of the pointing and then we're going to spray it with some um, brick tint uh, do it all orange and then i'll get a, a red and pick out the odd brick so it looks like the other chimney it'll uh, it'll work um, we had a couple of concrete commons that we tried it out on and uh, it does work so that's what we'll be doing up there and from down here you won't know the difference between the, uh, the two chimneys and of course it's going to have uh, two new pots on to match the, uh, the one up there we're sat down here waiting so there we're going up on the chimney and the other part is all that uh, section there, we've got to strip the render off it and then restore the brickwork, which again will probably be uh, going over it with a cut disc once the render's been removed, um, cutting out all the cement mortar and the lime pointing. So there's that to do, and I know possibly later on that one. But that's another story. And they also want this, which is a modern extension, they want it smooth rendered. Now it's constructed with concrete block, so we can't really strip it back and, uh, and do a great deal with that. So we'll uh, maybe try and flatten it off a bit, put some um, a bit of that render bond on it and uh, just flat render it. Maybe do it in a, a white render or something for them. But uh, not a great deal I can do with it. I mean, stri stripping the render off the block work, I think, to be quite honest with you, because I did do a little uh, test sample bit over here. Just kind of like there. That's your, that's your concrete block there. Now, I think what will happen is if I try and take that render off, it's just going to eat the block, um, which isn't good. Tuesday morning. What are we on with? Well, <clears throat> I'm on this um, this job, a bit of a winter job, which is to repoint this uh, this old Victorian townhouse. Now you can see these joints; they've been attacked at some point. Now these joints should be, you know, a couple of mil really. Um, but somebody's opened them all up with a, a chisel. Uh, there's been a guy on here who started this job and buggered off after getting paid. Um, and he's attacked it in places with grinders. So you can see, you know, there's, there's little nicks and bits out of the, uh, the bricks everywhere where he's damaged them with his grinder. So we're having to kind of recut the Harris on them. Um, I did a load yesterday. I uh, didn't film it, a bit of a harassing day yesterday on here. To be quite honest, weather was atrocious. Um, you can see what we're having to do. I mean, we're never going to get them perfect. I mean, you just look at these here. You know, it's a very split off it. But we're going to repoint in a cement-based mortar on this one. She doesn't want lime. Um, I'm not bothered. You know, not my building. Uh, so it won't be a really strong mix um, I know some of you lads out there like to do it really strong because it'll last well that's not good 
However, a softish cement mortar mix on stock brick isn't too bad. Um, it's when you do it really hard that you end up with stuff like that happening, which is where it starts to spoil because somebody at some stage has done a really hard cement mortar in it, which has obviously over time failed and come out. I'm going to do it in, uh, in like a charcoal grey, purely because you can see traces of the original lime mortar there, which is in a charcoal grey. So uh, we'll do the old like for like, um, put it back to what it was when it was uh, new. We've also got a load of bricks to change on here. We've got uh, two windows to brick up, and there's a bit of stone repair to do on the front. Right, well, I'm going to crack on and uh, start cutting out. I'm hoping to have all of it, you see up there, all of it finished by end of play tomorrow. Got all down there done. And it's quite quite a lengthy gable. It's probably about, I don't know, 40 foot long, something like that. Right, I'll stop waffling on now and crack on. And you can see a little bit of footage on there, me cutting out. Right, catch you in a bit. There we go. Oh no. Schoolboy error. So I've dragged everything up on the uh, second lift of the scaffolding. Got set up. Got my respirator on. Turn on the grinder. Nothing. Why is that? Well, because I haven't turned it on at the socket inside the building. What an idiot. Right, I'll go down and do that and we'll catch you in a moment. Right, I'm back up. We've got power. Right, get the old uh, respirator on again. And start this cutting out. So a handy little tip for you, when you've been using your um, mortar raking disc and it's worn down quite considerably, don't just throw it away. You know, there's still a bit of life left in it for doing stock break. They're absolutely ideal because it's, uh, it's not very thick. So it fits in the joints now. These uh, stock brick or engineering brick as they, uh, they really are technically known are really, really hard. And they're quite good to be honest with you at uh, keeping water out um, with them being so hard and dense. So we don't need to worry too much about doing it with lime. Plus this building, there is actually a cavity there. Um, so cement mortar, it's fine. I'm happy doing that. Um, not at the back though. And I'll tell you why. The reason that we're not going to do the back in the cement mortar is because it's clay commons. A Victorian 80 millimeter clay common which, as you probably know, if you're in the, uh, in the business, um, do like to pour water in. So I did tell her that uh, I don't want to touch the back um, if she wants it in cement. However, I can do it in line for her at a later date. So we might be back at some point to do that for him. Um, but I think Billy the Builder has already done it with sand and cement, so uh, maybe, maybe they'll just leave it. I don't know. It's up to them. Well, I got to uh, 
Tuesday lunchtime, well, I'll say lunchtime, about uh, about two o'clock ish, and uh, I'd flown, I'd absolutely flown, and I'd managed to get all the cutting out done. The only bit of cutting out there is to do on this cable now is on the ground floor, which I'm not too fussed about. Um, a lot of that has actually been done, um, but there's just sections that need trimming up. So I'm not, not too worried about that. It's more the top. So anyway, to cut a long story short, we shall be starting the pointing this Wednesday, being tomorrow. So uh, we'll give you a run through on how we're going to do that, from mixing it to putting it in. And of course, with it being um, a cement mortar, we don't have to bother with all the cherishing uh, routine and the compacting with the churning brush and all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, just point it in and uh, towards the end of the day, just give it a quick uh, flick over with a soft brush. But I will be putting cherishing sheets on, um, really because it's, it's getting cold at night and if there's any frost, it will help to protect it. Um, so, you know, it's... it's Pretty straightforward this, uh, nothing hard and fast about it. But uh, if you're a, a novice and you've never had a go up pointing and um, you fancy doing back of your house or something like that, well, this may be of interest to you and uh, might give you some hints and tips on the best way to go about it. But always remember, whenever you're doing this, get a mask on. This stuff is deadly. Right, well, there you go. That's a view of, uh, of what we're doing. Like I said, you know, there's a lot of damage to these bricks, and um, it's been done over the years. So uh, it's just a case of uh, getting it as best as we can, really. I mean, you can see here, I've not touched this yet. You know, so it's it's messy, but you know, you've got bits like that that's shallow. So I'm I'm just getting them a bit deeper. And then, um, obviously, when we point it, we're getting plenty in it. Right, on with the next, I suppose. It's uh, it's lovely in that respirator. Really nice. I'm saying that, at least it's warm on your face, because it's uh, quite chilly today. It was the old uh, scrapey of the windscreen this morning. But I had to leave early yesterday. I had to go at about half three. Simple reason I had to do a bit of a runner because although I'm putting tarps up, or I had one tarp up to be honest, yesterday when I went downstairs, I noticed half a dozen cars that were all red, including all the windows. Now they weren't red when I started, so it was obviously brick dust. So I thought, uh Best to do one before they come back and I get lynched. Anyway, all the cars are gone this morning, which is good. And I managed to get my van outside the job and I put extra sheeting up. So hopefully we won't have a repeat of that problem today. It's a, a bit of a bit of a run job, this one. Before we came, they've had Billy the Builder in and uh, basically they've been thrown off the job. Extremely poor what they were doing. I mean, you take that, look at that there, it's cut in probably about, about three, maybe four mil, and that was it, he was ready for pointing, you know, it's, uh, it's not good, 
all these is, is done, all these. I mean, he's been off the job a while, hence the, uh, the moss in them. But you can see, you know, marks where he's hit it with grinder and, you know, they're everywhere. They're all over. So, and then this is burnt sand mastic. This is what he was going to use to point it. And he seems to be doing like little bits here and there. He's not, uh, he's not been consistent in what he would do. With. But I believe that uh, he had... Uh, they had him take three quarters of the money off the job and then he buggered off, leaving them with a scaffolding that they had to have taken down. So they got to pay for another scaffolding for us to come and do this and uh, obviously pay for having it done again. Um, and it's a shame they're a lovely couple, you know. Um, no problem with payment or anything. I've done a deal with her, she pays weekly. We don't want to get to the end and then get I'm not paying, which does happen sometimes. Anyway, let's crack on. I'm out. There you bugger. The old gloves on. So we've got the uh, the old Hessian sheeting up today. Uh, I should put on to protect the point I did yesterday. It uh, used to be all right. I don't think the frost has damaged it. There don't seem to be any signs of uh, frost damage at all. But I put two layers of uh, Hessian sheeting on and then uh, a couple of layers of plastic tarpaulin. So it should have been nice and uh, cosy in there last night. Right, so what we're doing is obviously pointing. So, uh, we've got our uh, bucket of mortar, which is uh, that. It's uh, uh, sand with a cement binder. Uh, mixed it, uh, I've done it about four and a half to one. And it's got black dung in it, uh, which will turn like a, a darkish grey when dry. Uh, purely because that's what colour it was originally, the original mortar. Um, I don't like to see them done in red, these stop break. It tends to fade after time and it goes like a horrible patchy pink colour. And uh, I find it looks a bit messy, a bit cheap. But if you do it in the black, it uh, it keeps its colour. <laughs> All right, tools that we need. Aye. A good old pick, of course, you know, for any, any bits that are missed, we can just chip them out. The only thing I haven't brought up is the uh, the water pump bottle. But I think we'll be all right for a bit, so we need that. It's fairly fresh, this, and I'm not, not going to wet it up. Uh, simple reason, there's, there's virtually no suction in these... Um, stop break so if i wet it what's going to happen is that that water is just going to sit in there and it's going to when i put the point in it it's going to come forward you end up with it little drips on the bricks you don't want drips on your bricks so i uh i tend not to wet it up with stocks it's had a good wash down so there's no dust in there um i mean i spent a good hour washing down this gable the other night and um, so it's uh it's dust free so it should stick to it fine. So if you're uh, new to this particular uh, kind of thing, mortar, like I said, is about four and a half to one. That's four and a half sand to one cement. There's a little bit of uh, app mix in it as well, um, just just to make it workable. It's a bit dead without it. I was going to put some um, hydrated lime in, but it's buried at the back of the lockup, and uh, I thought no, it's just not worth it. Um, I'll just do it with a bit of uh, bit of app mix. Right, so you also need one of these, which is a hawk, and a whole set of these uh, these little pointing trowels, uh, different thicknesses. 
And because all of your joints are, you know, whether it's the perps or it's the uh, horizontal joints, they're all different sizes. So you need different size trowels to, to keep chopping and changing um, to make a neat job of it. And then, of course, the good old faithful pick. So if you've got any little bits like that up there, you can just flick them out and get rid of them. Nice and simply, without having to pick up a hammer and chisel. So all this has been ground out, as you've seen in the uh, earlier part of the video. So, I'm going to start up there. Get it on your trowel like so. Very carefully, push it in that joint. Try not to get it on the brick. You don't want to get it on the brick. It's got to be square and neat in that joint. Now, what I like to do is do all the uh, what we call the perps, which is your perpendicular joints. I like to do a load of them first, so I do about a meter's worth, a square meter, and then I start running in the uh, the horizontals. All your bedding joints, as you may prefer. Anyway, it was all sheeted up last night um, because there was a frost. Uh, well, some parts of the country have dropped down to as low as minus five. Um, we weren't quite as bad here, but we went down to about minus two last night. Um, I did put some uh, some frost proofer in it yesterday, which just makes it set a bit quicker. It's not like antifreeze in your car or anything like that. It, it you know, it just it basically what it does. It makes that chemical reaction in the cement go a bit quicker um, because cement sets uh, way away a chemical reaction. So, of course, you add water to it, it starts that chemical reaction, just like lime. It creates heat, and that heat pushes the water out of the uh, out of the out of the mortar, water out of the mortar. And that's kind of how it works. The same with uh, some gypsum plasters. They work the same way. It's these chemical reactions that produce a small amount of heat, which slowly but surely evaporates the, uh, the moisture, allowing it to set. Whereas with, uh, if we were using quick lime, which obviously this time of year we won't be doing, um, that's not a chemical set. That's uh, set by way of carbonation. So it, it pulls carbon out of the air which creates the set and uh, the cure as well as the set. And of course, by, by doing that, what it's actually doing is reducing its carbon footprint. Um, basically, so it's, it's neutral. You know, it's, it's very good at that. Where cement doesn't do that, cement's carbon footprint remains uh, quite high. That's why I prefer lime. Or one of the reasons I prefer lime. However, we can't all have lime, can we? I mean, if this had been any other time of year and then any other job, I think I'd have insisted on it being in, in lime to match what it was. Like I said earlier on the video, you know, this, this building, it's got a cavity. It's a... Uh, sort of mid to late Victorian um, so you know it's not uh, it's not going to take any harm with a bit of, uh, bit of cement these bricks are like iron you know you don't want to trip a, trim a little bit of one of these with your brick axe oh, no. they just chip on you and shatter very hard one of the hardest bricks out there to be honest you could get at one point ones that were known as Accrington bricks which are the same as these these aren't an Accrington and I can tell that by the quality of them you know, when the sun comes across it you can see that it's um, basically well I won't say seconds but they're, they're not good quality because you can see all the bumps and bumps on them and things which you don't get with the uh, true Accrington stock they really were a uh, Brick amongst bricks, the king of bricks. And if you're in the south of the country, like I, I know quite a few of you are, um, 
I don't know whether you've come across the Accrington Salt Brick or not. I don't know if it got as far down as, say, London, for example. But uh, yeah, they are. They're, they're a good brick. And most of the uh, sort of terrace properties and these townhouses and things like that in this area were built predominantly on the front with the um, the Accrington Salt Brick. And the rear of them tended to be in a clay common, pretty much like this one. So it was all about appearance. It looked nice at the front, but crappy at the back. And today we don't really do that. It's, uh, it's the same appearance right round. But I suppose it was to do with cost. Especially on the old terraced houses, because the, the Atkinson stock brick, or the stock brick, had been more expensive. And you take this building, you've got three different types of brick on here. You've got the probably Atkinson stock on the front, and then a cheaper version on this gable, and then round the back, you've got eight to mil clay commons. All in a bid to, uh, to save money. And in the day when this uh, this area was developed, it was actually the Jewish Quarter, uh, or known as the Jewish Quarter. And there is actually a synagogue at the end of the road here. I don't, I don't know whether it's still open or not. I think it's I think it's closed down now. But uh, apparently they used to have a policeman on the corner. There are, there are three three streets that were part of it, and uh, there used to be a policeman on duty on the corner. So I've been told. And if you were going on official business into the area, uh, that was fine. But if you were just sort of wandering down the street, the policeman told you to uh, basically bugger off. You weren't allowed down. It was, uh, it was business or being a Jewish person only, which is quite, uh, quite bizarre. You could imagine that in today's world. It wouldn't... Uh, it won't pan very well. Well, a grand old building of these. They weren't the, the most expensive ones in town, but they were uh, they were nice, you know. They were fair size as well. You got three floors in them. It's just a shame that over the years, this area, it's, it's ended up as, or a lot of it, had ended up as like rented flats. Um, it is slowly but surely changing and becoming more um, top private residential and Airbnbs again now. The old rented flats seem to be disappearing, which is uh, probably good because it was quite run down at one point. Some of the, the streets that lead off it are still a bit run down, sort of flat land, but not too bad, you know. They have been worse. And there's a little run through on the area. This is, uh, if anybody's wondering, it's, uh, it's in Lytham St. Anne's in Lancashire that we're doing this. Right next door to uh, Blackpool. Some of you may have visited at some stage in your life. Not a place I enjoy going. I think it's a bit, uh, a bit tacky for me. All right, so you can see here now that where we've got some of these perps that are going right through. I'll just keep firing it in big chunks of it. He's putting it in and putting it in and putting it in so it's come to the back of that joint. You know, it's the same as when you're doing the lime. You, you want the joints full. You know, you're not just prettying it up. You're, you're doing it for a reason on here. <clears throat> and you probably saw me there switch trowels from a thin one to a thicker one. That's because we've got some thicker perps hanging about and we've got some that go a bit thinner now but not quite as thin so we're using even thinner one there fill them out i 
Right, so and when you're doing this particular type of point in the older uh, cement mortar point, and you don't need to worry about you know churning brushes and and etc. Uh, for compaction. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, because you're new to the channel, well, have a look at some of the uh, the footage that we have on the channel uh, undertaking line pointing. There are some good videos out there, like on the uh, church bell tower, etc. That we did this summer. You know, there's a really thin joint up there, so we have to get out the extra thin little trowel just to get that in there. Because if you use a the trowel that's too big, what you're going to do is you're going to end up way on the face of the brick for one, and for two, you're not going to get it to the back of that joint correctly. That's why we have a whole series of trowels. I normally have my belt on that I keep them in, but I've left it down there and I ain't going down again for it. Right, so we're back to this one now. Now the breed of this particular trial is a Marshalltown and it's extremely expensive but very good. I was buying some cheaper ones that was getting off the old eBay and uh, to be honest with you, they, they're all right. You know, that's, that's these ones. They are okay, but when you get down to the, the six mil ones, you just tap it in the snap. I mean, I was using one yesterday and I broke it and it's the last one out of, I think, five. That I've had, um, or that I bought, so I don't think I'm going to get any more of them in the six mils. I'm, I'm going to uh, do it with something like the Marshall Towns. Because, uh, they do tend to last a bit longer, but they are more expensive. It's only about 20 quid that, remember rightly. They're not cheap. But when I'm doing the uh, the old wine plastering, all the trails that I have for that are uh, Marshall Town. Um, that's all I've ever used, really. And my brick trials are Marshalltown. Or well, the two brick trials I've got, I've got two types. Uh, rubber handle, soft grip. Um, and a uh, wooden handle. I've had both of them for years. I mean, if you're, if you're only going to be sort of doing your your own house or something like that. It doesn't really matter, you know, your, your cheaper trials will do you. But uh, if you're doing it for a living, well, obviously uh, you want the best of the best on the old trials, don't you? Now at the top, right next to the uh, the facer in the eaves there, the soffits rather, the um, the joints haven't been attacked, so they're nice and thin how they should be. So I use a little trowel to get into those, so I don't want to open them up. You know, they're not supposed to be huge wide joints. So we'll keep that as it was. You know, because you've got a nice thin trowel, it, it pushes it into that joint, and it. Uh, it sorts it out. You can hear the seagulls in the background there. It's a quiet part of town. This, well, I say quiet. I mean, it is busy, but traffic-wise, it's quiet compared to uh, where we were working on the old trawl boat. You don't have the, uh, the cars shooting past every 30 seconds. I mean, the town itself, the town centre, it's just behind me at the moment. Two minute walk and you're in the, uh, what we call the square, St Anne's Square. And the cars facing me and went that way. If you were to keep walking for a while, a few miles, two and a half, three miles, something like that, you come to Lytham. And Lytham was a, like a fishing village at one point before St. Anne's existed. And uh, 
today it's a very posh area we do get work in Lytham from time to time and uh, we generally tend to be a bit uh, a bit nicer jobs you know you you do tend to get the lime and etc rather than doing the old uh, sand and cement Oh, look, it's as cold this morning as yesterday. Perishing up here yesterday. Of course, you don't get the sun on here. You get a tiny little blob of it comes around late afternoon, just before, uh, just before it starts going dark. So it's cold all day. As the front gets the sun on it and it warms up, so every now and again I have to disappear around the front for a quick warm up. So remember, if you're doing this, if you're a, a beginner or a total novice, you've got to remember, don't do a really, really strong mix. You may think doing a strong mix is going to make the job better. It's going to last. You know, your, your clients will be happy because, you know, 10 years down the line, it's still there. Well, yeah, it will still be there, but the brakes won't. Or the faces are gone. You, you want to be going four and a half to five um, ratio. So that's that's four and a half five sand to uh, one of the uh, the cement that you're using. Um, you know that's strong enough. Cement is extremely strong material wise. Um, I think it's about forty eight newtons, um, which is quite high. You know, I've just seen a squirrel go past there. Uh, yeah, it's quite high. So. You don't need to be doing a really, really strong mix. It's this uh, unfortunate, this culture that we have these days in the UK where nobody's actually being trained properly in this kind of work. They, you know, they're picking it up off somebody who's picked it up, you know, so they're, they're only getting half the story when it comes to the, the knowledge of how to do it correctly. You know, I've said in the past, anybody's after a bit of a bit of advice, you know, drop us a line on the old uh, comments down below there. You know, I'm always happy to uh, try and help out when I can. I mean, this particular building, they, they're having it all done inside. Uh, I'll soon get some footage of that at some point. But uh, we had some, uh, some rogue builders from Blackpool in and they've... Um, now they've made a balls of everything, really. And then buggered off. Not finished. Nowhere near finished. Uh, I mean, they, they had started doing all the pointing on there. They made a mess of that. <coughs> and uh, I was looking uh, <coughs> Excuse me. I was looking at some of the plaster work they'd done inside. And, uh, it, I mean, it's not, not brilliant, but it's not. I've seen worse, put it that way. So, you know, it's uh, again probably somebody who's uh, picked it up and does a bit of everything. Right, and a little tip for you. So, stock brake, for 80 millimetres, top to bottom. So we've got one, two, three, four. So we've got four across, and then you do from the top down 11 bricks. And that'll give you a square metre. Now, I don't know how that pans out with, uh, with modern bricks for something like 65 mil, 75 mil. Um, I mean, it won't be far off. So, I mean, if you're going to measure a building up using that method of counting the uh, the bricks, you're probably better adding on a metre at the end of your calculations for uh, modern bricks. They are slightly smaller, but the joints are bigger, so you know, it's hard to say, isn't it? I mean, I don't do enough of it to, 
they're basically be concerned. You know, it's, it's generally all the properties I work on. Again, if you are going to do a bit of pointing yourself this time of year, I really don't recommend that you use lime. Um, it takes too long to, to set, too long to cure, and you'll end up with it failing on you um, because your, your nighttime temperatures are dropping extremely low. You can get away with it with uh, cement mortar because you can put, like I say, you can put the rapid hardness in it, which you can't really do with lime. And... Um, Always, 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 you know, this time of year, put on your, uh, <coughs> your old Hessian sheeting because uh, that will help protect it from uh, a light frost. I mean, if you've got a deep freeze, it's not going to work. You know, that's, that's going to go on you as well. But a light frost, I mean, we had a light frost last night. I'm going to say a light frost, you know, minus one, minus two. You're going to get away with it with that rapid hardener in the old... Um, Hessian sheeting. But if you're using a rapid hardener, <coughs> just be careful how much you mix. Because if you do like a, a cement mixer full, for example, um, <coughs> it's going to have set on you before you, you've used it. Because it does set quite rapid. I mean, this, I've not put rapid hardener in this today, but <clears throat> it's early in the morning. And obviously I've done a, a batch to see me pretty much through the day. So this, by the time the frost comes tonight, will be pretty much set anyway. Um, you know, it's, it's about eight hours and, and it's pretty much set. This stuff. But I, again, I will be sheeting it up. So, Now, if you're uh, one of the uh, younger chaps, shall we say, out there that does a bit of pointing, um, some of the tricks that I've uh, I've heard about and actually seen that some of uh, some of the lads are doing is they're doing things like they're putting waterproof in the cement mortar. Well, you don't need that. You know, that's just wasting your pennies. You don't really need it. Because cement in itself is pretty water repelling anyway. Um, you know, your waterproof is of things like renders and stuff that uh, help control the suction on scratch coats, for example, and, and so forth. Um, and another one that I've heard they're doing, they're putting either PVA or SBR into the mix, saying it'll stick it to the brakes. Well, that's... no. No, you, you don't need to do that either. You know, you... If you're using cement or using lime, the clusters binders, you know, that, that's what's holding your, your mortar together anyway, you know. It's not going to, it's not going to stick it to the brick or anything like that. It's, uh, again, an expense you don't need to be going to. Anyway, there we go. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to get perched on a quite a big area this morning and then uh, start running it all in. So I'll, uh, I'll come back to you in a short while when I've done a bit more. I tell you somewhere, it's bloody freezing up here this morning. Get the old ears. Well, I'm winning. It's uh, 
very cold though, very, very cold. It's not freezing, but it's cold in all of you now. Uh, but I've got uh, quite a bit done. Just got to brush it off yet. What I'll be doing is uh, once uh, once I've got this next little bit uh, finished, I'll be putting the, uh, the sheeting on it to keep it all um, nice and snug overnight. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going well, it's going well. Right, do a bit more and then uh, we'll uh, conclude this week's video because uh, it's Thursday. And I think, uh, I think people are liking him bugging out on a Thursday. I seem to get more views on a Thursday than I do on a Friday. So we're going to start um, putting the videos out now on uh, Thursdays. Right, let's crack on. There's a cold breeze blowing, it's a bit like having an Eskimo blowing on the back of your neck. It wasn't at all. It's right around the point, it's in the sun, it's all being warm. It's actually quite pleasant. Anyway, it's going to warm up next week. Yep, it's warming up, but then it's going to rain. So I think it will be top hauling, bring them over here for the tent, keep the rain off. Here's an interesting uh, thought. All the, uh, the older buildings in this area, uh, when I say older, the ones that were 18 something or other, they were all built in the uh, locally produced clay common brick. And the ones that were dated from say 19, 1904, something like that, uh, have this uh, stock brick. Now, it makes me wonder, is this because the railway had arrived to the area, which meant that the bricks could be brought from other areas by train? Because when you think, you know, you've got quite a few thousand stock brick in one of these buildings, and you're not going to bring that by a horse and cart, say, 40, 50 mile away, um, to build a house. 
you're going to get stuff that's a few miles away with your horse and cart. So I think it must have been when the railway arrived that they started using the, uh, the better stock brakes. Just a thought, could be wrong. But uh, they didn't produce any locally, so it must be the case. <laughs> right, anyway, we're going to leave this, uh, this week's video here now. Um, it's been a very quick week this week, it's flown. But uh, got a lot done, got all this cable length cut out and, um, you know, done the old uh, pointing. So, uh, yeah, been a good week, productive week. Well, as usual, welcome to all the new subscribers. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, really do like those thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying the videos, please feel free to subscribe. Let's see if we can't get this uh, subscriptions up to uh, a thousand as soon as we can. Uh, nice round number of thousand. Right, so we shall see you next week where we'll be continuing with the pointing. Uh, maybe a bit of brick replacement, I don't know yet. Um, but uh, definitely repointing. All the cutting out's done now, so we don't need to do that. And uh, yeah. We'll leave it there and we'll see you next week.